The Sinchi. Oh, oh, those oh, good old days, man. So, so, so good, so so good old K long days. Yeah. I've got a best selling book out of that. Go on, darling, <laughs> she the, the oh. good old days. The good old days oh, of Singapore on, football no. when every foreign team was K long. Welcome back to Yahoo Footballing Weekly Part 2 with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. Yahoo editor Chad and Kyung and Spurs fan Daryl. And what's with the shirt, Daryl? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I heard we were doing a local football segment, or I thought it would touch on international football. So I've gone for this international <laughs> yeah, top here. First time Sweden. We have, yeah, first time we have a guest doing a changeover in the <laughs> costume changeover. In- he is a very typical local supporter in the sense that he wears the jersey of another nation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Globalization. Totally Singapore, man. Uniquely Singapore. But before we get stuck into it, I just have to give a shout out to our wonderful viewers oh. and listeners because it's building, Hank Young. We yeah. are getting a real head of steam. We said in a previous podcast, he's getting recognized in the coffee shops. <laughs> i got young guys telling me they're watching and listening regularly and our comments it's become this ecosystem yeah. where they're chatting amongst themselves. Commenters are debating among commenters on issues, which is good, which is good. Yeah. Have We're getting more feedback and discussion than uh, local politics. Oh. So, which is what we want, guys, which is what we want. So keep them coming. Many comments to get through. Hun Kyung, you okay. want to kick us off? Sure. So this guy, uh, Boss Dicky, Boss Dick, Boss Dyke, whatever. Thank I you like, for your I comment. Like <laughs> so, so, so last week we talked about uh, how Ilham Fandi was injured. Yep. Mm. Ilham Fandi was injured at Jalan Besar Stadium. So he said, Ilham played for Young Lions for two years and, and this is his home ground has been Jalan Besar Stadium. He knows the surface better than others. That's one way to look at it. Yeah. Another way to look at it is two years of wear and tear on that artificial pitch. That's what caused his ACL injury. I'll go a step further. Mm. Uh, he plays most of his games, or he did play most of his games, in the Singapore Premier League, mm. which, no disrespect to the league, is slower mm. and less intense. You step up a level and you play international football, it's faster. The, the passing is quicker. It's slicker. There's more movement. There's more turning. Once you play that elevated, more intense level of football on an artificial pitch, the risk is is greater exactly and it's as simple as that what do you think my friend Daryl I think definitely he may know the pitch well or familiar with it but it's still a bad pitch no, yeah. I mean sure. he's still got to cover all the ground that he's needed to and then um, higher risk of you know, higher risk of injuries absolutely uh, yeah. right next comment looks like an Oasis fan yeah. hope so Champagne yeah. Supernova with cues but I'll just say Champagne Supernova says move all of our games to the Kalang Stadium someone replied Spongebob Bopple Square no idea no idea Sp- Spongebob Bopple Square says can I allow later the K-pop concert stands mm. angry yeah <laughs> what are we going to do about this eternal dilemma of where the Lions play should it be <coughs> National Stadium Jalabasar is there a way we can fix this thing in stone always at Kalang I think it has always been National Stadium right but the thing is that you no know, the thing was AFF Cup was shifted ahead and then the scheduling created all sorts of problems not only for us for Bukit Jalil in, in yeah. Malaysia as well. So right now, I think I think I hope AFF have learned their lesson on not bringing the the, the 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 schedule forward all of a sudden without any I don't know without any proper reasons why. And then because you're creating all this scheduling, people you you definitely need uh stadiums concerts to to know generate revenue for the stadiums. So so you definitely need the stadiums. You definitely also want your national team to play at the top stadium. It's a national stadium for goodness sake. So both need to be there and both need proper management to schedule the mm. things. Yeah. Mm. Why are you looking at me? You don't you don't agree? <laughs> I mean I agree with what you're saying, Hang Kyong, but even the the guy who uh, Champagne Supernova said uh, move to the Kalang Stadium, but guys, it's not the Kalang Stadium anymore. It's not the National Stadium anymore. It's, sport. it's the Sports Hub. It's just there to generate money, revenue, through various events, whether it be it uh, international games for our national football team, whether is it a uh, NDP rehearsal, NDP for this year, mm-hmm. uh, whether is it a JHO concert or like like yeah, wh- whatever it may be. So. I mean, you have to fit it into the schedule somehow. So, I mean, Correct. forward planning definitely mm. helps. Fair point. But, but you, you can't be a given that it will be given to the, the mm. football team. Okay, I agree with the first part. I don't agree with the second part because the first part, 
that's not unique to Singapore. We keep acting like this this shared. We are arrangement. uniquely Singapore. No, but we keep saying this sports hub. <laughs> Wembley has to have pop concerts to generate revenue. Yep. So does the SCG and the MCG in Australia. So does the Maracanã in Brazil. You know, yep. there's not a venue in the world, a national venue in the world that can survive merely on its own sport. Not only, mm. but a specific sport. So you'll have rugby at Wembley. You'll have NFL at field. Wembley. Track and field. Mm. You have to do it. The London Stadium, <coughs> West Ham, part of its agreement is in the off-season, it has to host other events. That's the Olympic legacy. Every major stadium in the world mm -hmm. has to host other events to make revenue. None of us are disputing that or have a problem with it. The difference, the fundamental difference, which is why I disagree on the second part, football takes priority. If it's your national stadium... The Coldplay concert at Wembley has to be fit in around the yeah. three lines fixtures, not the other way round. It doesn't matter whether you're U2 or Oasis get back together for Champagne Supernova yeah. over there. Even if Oasis get back together, they would still have to fit their fixtures around the three line schedule. That's the difference. So, and, and Jay Cho has said he could, Jay, Jay Cho has, has said, I will gladly move my, move my concert around just. Just let me have a chance to sing to my fans. Yeah. How many times have yeah. we got to say? It's very, very simple. Get Jay Chow to do the pre-match entertainment. Get the aunties in, right? And all the teenage teeny boppers. Get them in. Compel them to stay for the football. They have to stay. Lock the doors so the teeny boppers can't leave. Let Jay Chow come back in again at half time. Everybody's happy, and right? Dismantle the the stage within three hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, they, they do it in the, the Super Bowl. Can do it. They do it in the Super Bowl. <laughs> they do it in Aussie Rules. They had Robbie Williams at the Aussie Rules. Jay Chow, yeah, you why heard not? It why not? Why not? I'm all for it. Right, Jay Chow, Lions, Bit Roll Jack, mix it all mix up. It all, together. it all works for me. Okay. Right, what's the next one? All right, um, Mr. Argyle. Uh, I like this one. Well, he said there are no free swimming pools, but the national swimming. Swimmers have done relatively well. Okay, he's this, stoking the fire here. I like this so, one. So, so, so we have said that you know, um, football is becoming more a middle class kind of uh, kind of sport in Singapore because yeah. because uh, fields pay. you need to pay to use the fields. You now now you got football academies. There are no free fields anymore. So he's saying he's rebutting us. It yeah. Well, well there are no free swimming pools in Singapore, but we still produce national swimmers. Hmm. Okay. Okay, you can see where we're going with this. Yeah. I think it's very ironic. I think he makes a very, I assume it's he, apologies if not, but Agio makes a very interesting point that Singapore has turned the stereotype upside down. When I was a kid growing up in England, swimming was seen as middle class because there weren't that many public swimming pools and nobody lives in condos. And football, you just step outside, find a piece of grass and you play. It's free. In Singapore, ironically, because of the climate, it's the opposite. Every housing estate has a public swimming pool. Yep. There are two near my apartment. There's one at Haogang, there's one at Senkang. Yeah, yeah. I checked, it costs $1.50 for kids. All I need to become the next Olympic swimmer is to pay my $1 and get a $10 pair of swimming trunks and decathlon, <laughs> and I'm an Olympic swimmer. All right, not quite. No. But yeah, I might need a bit more than <laughs> that. You pay a Just bit more, for, you pay a bit more yeah. for the coaching, but. Yeah, okay, but the, the initial potential is yep. developed paying 50 cents. If I want to play football, I've got to rent a facility. I've got to go and get one of those cage guy places. Or if I'm lucky, maybe I get the futsal yeah, at HDB, but very unlikely. I got a book. It's $100 plus. I got to get 10, 15 other guys. It's a, to me, it's an apples and oranges it's comparison. Right? It's an individual sport against a team it's sport. sport yeah. Yeah. So swimmers, swimmers, I think, well, you don't need to have a lot of things to make to improve your swimming it's skills. It's just you and a, 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 a volume down, of water. It's basically down to you also, right? Yeah, Whereas yeah. football is really a team sport. And swimming is really unique to Singapore because yeah. when like I was growing up, uh, everyone had to take like swimming classes when it's you everywhere. were like eight yeah. or nine or something like that. And it's, like it's that. affordable and yeah. it's subsidized and yeah. 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 So, and also just to add to that point, being slightly facetious, there is a there is the Chinese swimming club yep. down at Amber Road, <laughs> very popular with the Atas families, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Desirable, mm -hmm. aspirational. Everybody wants to be a part of the Chinese swimming club culture. Game. Everybody wants to swim. Everybody wants, there is no football equivalent yeah. in Singapore, shall I say, diplomatically, of the Chinese swimming Hopefully club. Hopefully Lion City sailors, but still a long way to well, go. Well, exactly. So yeah. it shows you there is a difference of priorities. Mm. 
that's fine. Swim, sail, play football, I don't mind. But we can't pretend they're the same. <coughs> nope. The priorities of swimming are very different. The aspirations towards swimming are very different. And the way things are currently in Singapore, it's much, much cheaper to swim. Mm. 50 cents yeah. if you're a kid than it is to play football. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's an apples and oranges comparison. Yeah, but, well, good point. But, but it's a good point. Do fire back at us. Do fire back. Keep yeah. the comments coming in. Oh, you better tell them. Where should they send them? Ah, Yahoo South, South East Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Yes. And now we've got come to the comment of the week. Correct. Which is why I asked Han Kiong to state again where to send your comments because you're going to pile in with comments yes. on this next contributor. This one came into on our YouTube channel and it's from somebody called... Uh, he's got a funny name. This person? Spider-Man? Spider-Man? Spider Spider Spider-Man. Oh, oh, Spider oh, brilliant name. Oh, wow. brilliant. Have you got nothing our else? Our guest actually wrote in to comment. <laughs> Have you got nothing else better to do? You come <laughs> here and then you go home and comment on this podcast. Anyway, uh, good for you. In all seriousness, it it's was a good, a good comment. point. He said, if you want to keep the Young Lions project going, then put them in the NFL, not the American NFL, <coughs> Singapore's National no football league the, the next tier down next tier down it will give them more games at their level and that's, that's, I think it's a good idea well let's go to the source mm. Daryl elaborate <laughs> why do you feel this way so I was I mean I watched back the episode about the, um, the young lions and I actually went to Wikipedia you, you, you did I don't watch that <laughs> don't <laughs> say that I watch it religiously <laughs> as you do so I think they've been in like the Singapore Premier League or the S League for about 20 years mm. And then um, they started off well, but the past like 15 years, they've just been very bad, like always near the bottom. And uh, they've played about like 500 over games. And out of these 500 over games, they've only won like 140 of oh, these games. Wow. So I, they've only been winning like 25, 27 percent. And of I think games. a lot of those wins were early on. Yeah, and in a lot of those games years, were in the earlier any. earlier years. And then, so what is the point? Like, if you're gonna assemble the best young players together, but they are playing in a league where everyone is a fully grown adult uh, professional footballers and they're not doing that well you know you you either can like disband them and then just get signed up by the clubs but then they may not get enough mm. minutes right so then if you still want them to play together then why don't put them in our national football league which is you know below the singapore premier league and in a way try to see how they perform. Mm. Hopefully, they, they will do better and they get the game, game time there. I like the logic. I mean, it's the logic that would be applied to any other league, whether it be yeah. England, Australia, whatever. But I can see the counter argument being that then the standard drops even lower mm. and therefore the gulf is much bigger if they do get up to international level. And then you can also, but you can also argue that, you know, it doesn't give them that losing kind of mentality. Yeah. You know, they, they, they have that... Which they certainly have now. <laughs> yeah, which, which, you know, now they have that winning kind of mentality, which might work for them, but, you know, you have to weigh up the consequences. But I say, there used to be the S League and then there was a Prime League. That's right. We oh, used that. to have a Prime League, which which just means the, the, younger the, ones. the younger ones, the under 23 mm. sides of the clubs, or the the... Re reserves to play you know it's, it's similar like uh, the England under 23 and used to have the old similar yeah. to the old reserve league yeah. that yeah. England used to have yeah, when they I was used a kid. to have the reserve league so it, we as league also had a prime league for a while and then they finally the, the, the club saying ah, we don't want to keep so many players on our roster you know you know so that's why they eventually corral all the under 23s to form the young lions mm. and then eventually they shut off the prime league altogether mm. so is it possible I think to restart the Prime League so that, you know, they can play play among... The, that, that, that's a standard that the Young Lions are playing. But I, I was also thinking that, you know, the, the clubs are really struggling at exactly. the moment. So only perhaps the Lions City Sailors can manage that. But, of know, course, I'll yeah. agree. But I can imagine people watching it and the first thing they say is cost. Yeah, cost Where is does the money problem, come from? Yeah. They can barely find the money to keep the Singapore Premier League going. But, I, of but course the Young I Lions agree. has been a, a, a conundrum for, for, for Singapore football for a long, long while. But do let us know mm. what you think because this... I agree with both of you. Mm. This is a perennial thorn in the side mm. for Singapore football. How do we develop? What do young... we do with the young lions? Let yeah. us know at usual places, which ties in very nicely to the next point. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> we can already guess what I think, but 
Guess I, is I, back. I, I'm not sure Guess about this. Back, back again. DPMM <laughs> of Brunei are to return to the Singapore Premier League. And I saw the lot. Steve Keen. Yeah, I read lots of the local media coverage. And it, I, I shouldn't make. It did make me laugh when it said in the local media the much anticipated <laughs> return of the. DPMM. By, by who? I just imagine <laughs> Auntie Tay and Topo sitting there going, hey, where's DPMM? <laughs> oh, come back. Is this an AI article? Yeah, stay any love. I, I, was just sitting here. I was just sitting here thinking, what happened to DPMM Brunei? I've been sitting here waiting and their so, much anticipated so, return. So what happens is that they won the league actually in 2020 or 2019. Before yeah, COVID. 2019. Ah, before COVID. Yeah, yeah, just before yeah. COVID, they were actually the defending champions. Then COVID <coughs> hit. Mm. And then they had to say, well, because we are based in Brunei. Yeah, can't travel. We can't travel. All the travel issues come out. So they set out the 2020 set up the past three seasons. Yeah. And then now they say, okay, now since everything is cleared, restrictions have been lowered. Okay. Well, we can play football again. Here's the thing about DPMM. I mean, they've been here since the the 2000s. Mm. Mm. They've been here. They've won the league twice, I think. So, what good has they have they brought to Singapore Premier League, Singapore football? They're just like, a, they are a nomadic side. They wanted to play in Malaysia League because... Obviously, Brunei is a very small football community mm. and then but it's wealthy. not enough. That for well, DPMM is, is owned by the Crown Prince, so yeah, they so have lots of money. Yeah, so, so it helps. It helps SPL because they bring money to the league. That, yeah. that is, that's obviously the reason. And no, But, you know, throughout the years, they've insisted on playing their home grounds. They're, mm. they're playing their home matches in Brunei because obviously it's a 28,000-seater. Obviously, they get the fan receipts anyway. So, they, they, they've insisted on putting that. They are not based in Singapore, not like Albirex, Nigata, who are based in Singapore and do have a very strong community work done in Jurong East. But, you know, DPMM, it's just like a very distant Correct. club that, you no, know, oh, we got to play them, we got to play them. But what what good did they bring to us? I, 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 I For the life of me, I, I don't see any other benefits they get rather, uh, other than financial gains. Could not agree mm. more on that mm. point. I think every point you made is a really good one. Mm. This is not about DPMM Brunei themselves. Mm. They're a well-run well run club. Yep. There's money involved. So this is not us tech in the club itself. We're just looking a step back. What does this mean for Singapore football? Let's take Alberex Negata first because it's a good point you make. They borrowed their J-League model, which is community first, grassroots up. The community work that Alberex does in Jurong is extraordinary. Better than any any other local I would say local no I've seen it first hand they go into the schools they bring out the the mascots the ball boys the ball girls they from the grassroots up from young children up it is an all encompassing community project it is fabulous what Alberex is doing and they make it clear they play here they train here they plant seeds for development they share and swap players they bring in a Singaporean uh, they sign Singaporean players DPMM doesn't they sign players, mm. some of their players then move on to other clubs Correct. as foreign players, which is terrific. I've never understood why DPMM must play in DPMM, must play in mm. Brunei. Mm. Beyond the obvious, yes, it's money. If you want to be in the Singapore Premier League, you play have to Singapore. play in Singapore. Yeah. Otherwise, it makes a farce yeah. of what the league is. This is not an international league. If we want to consider at some point a regional super league of sorts, the best three or four teams from Malaysia, Brunei, Thailand, Indonesia, and Singapore, I might be open to that because I actually think it might have longevity for your Lion City Sailors, Haogang, Tampanese, whatever. I think that might elevate the standards right. of all the clubs. Mm. But that's a separate conversation. This is a domestic league. Domestic clubs should play here. And I know people have said in the past, you've got Welsh league teams playing in yeah. England, yeah. Yeah. like, like Wrexham, who Can't Danny Bennett that. played for. We all seen Welcome to Wrexham. That's a different argument. They're part of the same kingdom. They're literally part of the same island. Yep. Wrexham is closer to some English clubs yep. than other English clubs. Club. They're very close to Liverpool and, and so mm -hmm. on. It's not the same argument. I don't see the benefits of domestic teams playing or, or flying to an international venue and coming back. I don't see how that benefits local nope. football. I don't see it at all. And, and, you know, the fact that they don't even sign local players. Yeah. It's like, then what's the point? I mean, if you want to say, okay, we are a top-run team and then we want to bring, you no, know, we want to sign local players, Singapore players, so that, you know, can make our team better or the local players can learn from it, it doesn't. 
So you're just like a satellite team. You can, yeah. you can even I say. I mean, you can play devil's yeah. advocate. They'll say they'll rise the standard, raise the standard yeah. of local football, give local teams good opposition. I mean, I look at their four players. They're good players. Belarus international yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Veron Carl. Who else you got? Former Spanish youth goalkeeper, defender, mm. Martinez, Uzbek and goalkeeper, and a Croatian midfielder. So good standard of foreigners. So yes, they will raise the standards of opposition. But then if coming back to the early point, if they whack the young lines 10 something, 10 Kosong or whatever, then you're asking that question, what is the point of this? What, exactly. what, how is local football benefiting from this? I can see how Brunei benefits from it. Yep. I can see how their gate receipts benefit from it. Sure, yeah. How does Singapore benefit, Dale? Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm not sure why we want to bring back uh, DPMM, yeah. but is it just we want to increase the number of teams? You know, that's why. And then DPMM, a kind of a well-run club, not like uh, Sporting Africa or like the Sinchi. Oh, oh, those good old days, man. So, the good, FC. So the good old s- K-Long days. Yeah. I got the best-selling book out of that. The good old days. The good old days oh, of Singapore on, football no. when every foreign team was K-Long. How I miss those days. <laughs> those K-Long corrupt days. Oh. Carry so, on, but DP... TPMM, yeah, I think that's the main, maybe that's one of the real reasons why like Singapore Premier League welcomed them back is because like you want to increase the number of teams. But then it goes back to like I mentioned about the NFL or the National Football League. Like you do have teams in there who have been playing there. Then why don't we work on them to try and make them like professional to to get players? Yeah, because they on. have Singaporeans uh, playing, right? They must be of a certain standard. So this is the only way to have more Singaporeans playing, right? By having more teams being professional getting their own sponsors through different means um yeah so so that's the here's, that's the here's way a, forward uh. here's a suggestion rather than bring back dpmmm bring back woodlands wellington yes. bring back gombak united yes. bring Sembawang back Sembawang Sembawang Rangers. Rangers. Come on. those three clubs are lying in dormancy why don't bring them back we should bring and them back. And there was still interest there. I, I was we in the taxi just the two weeks ago and a guy from Woodlands, former referee, he used to watch Woodlands Wellington regularly, remembers yeah, Venga and all the characters yeah. and all this. I spoke to another guy who lives in Jurong. He remembers Sundrum and yeah. Jason Ainsley, all these players from the 90s, yeah. 2000s. There was interest there. Now you've fired me up. It's got to be <laughs> Japanese style, grassroots, build from the bottom up. It's like Haogang. I still think Haogang is a good template for the others. Haogang Stadium, Haogang MRT, Haogang Town, Haogang, Haogang, Haogang. Yep. It's a clear identity to the town of Haogang. What does yeah. DPMM mean to the average young kid in Singapore? Nothing, I ask you. Nothing. A handful young of fan. Good. Don't even need a. Yeah, young football fan would not care about it. A handful of Brunei expats, Hmm. great, good for you. But to the average Singaporean fan, it doesn't register. It doesn't make me get up and go, or my daughter say, I want to watch Deep in Brunei. Hmm. She's still going to say to me, I want to watch Haogang, because she knows Haogang. She lives in Haogang. Yep. On the the topic of Haogang, let's move on to our next Yes, good positive story. Our final point of this podcast. Okay, you know, Pop... How come won the Singapore Cup last Seedless season? Segue. Their very, very first, yeah, good segue. Very, <laughs> very first trophy of the club, and their coach is actually a thirty-five years old, only, Mister Fadas Kasim. So Fadas Kasim took over Clementio. Clementio was a very high, highly respected head coach in 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 uh, How Gang, but he got burned out. He said he was burned out mm. in a recent interview. So he let this. Furthest Kasim take over, he mm. was an assistant coach. And he's only he's not he hasn't even played top tier football in Singapore. And then but he got one secret weapon that helped him become good. Ah, it gives me hope. <laughs> yeah, it gives me hope also. Championship manager or oh. football manager. Oh brilliant. From from gamer to coach. I think that was a that's a wonderful story to end off this this podcast. Brilliant I think story. I will, I would say it was a great story for him. He 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 combined all his knowledge and championship man, uh, manager, and then became a very good man manager himself. Hmm. And that's the biggest difference I think for all this all of us championship manager wannabes who think that we could be the next Jurgen Klopp or yeah. next Jose Mourinho. And then and then we think that oh just because we've played championship manager, but you know the thing about championship manager is yes, it simulates the games very very well but it doesn't simulate man management it is horrible in simulating yeah. man management and you got to deal with man management daily with players who have problems 
off the pitch, you know, players who doesn't don't agree with you, players who feel that, you know, you might have some issues with you. And, you know, championship manager for all his brilliance doesn't simulate that very well. Well, it reminds me mm. of myself. You know, how <laughs> Gung manager, Ferdows, he gets the gig, he grew up playing the football manager. When I was a kid, I played the world's first football manager game. Oh. Right? It was invented by a guy called Kevin Toms, came out in 1981, 82. It was on a computer called the Sinclair Spectrum. Whoa. Did that even come to Singapore? No, I don't know. I think you had the Commodore. You had the Commodore. Yeah. But in the UK, there was a computer game called the Sinclair Spectrum, football manager, the world's first simulation game. I was the West Ham manager. I played it every single day. And do you know where it got me today? Nowhere. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. I, I won nothing. I achieved nothing. I did nothing. So credit to you, Fidel. That's a comment on West Ham on the, yeah. uh, on the podcast. Credit to you, Fidel. You succeeded where everybody else failed and you took awesome. it to the next level. Uh, yeah. Good for you, man. Great way to finish. Great way to finish. So, so let us know your comments. Do you play computer games? Could you be the next DPMM manager? Should DPMM even <laughs> play in the Singapore Premier League send all your comments suggestions and feedback to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube Yahoo SG Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter and Yahoo SEA on TikTok yeah thanks again Daryl thanks Daryl thank you guys all right. Me. all right we're all off to play football manager see you next time same place see you soon see, see ya, ya.